What's up, everybody? Welcome to Building Our Power. This is Gabby back with another episode. Sorry, everybody, for the hiatus. We back. We ready to finish the um, the reading entitled "Community Control of the Poor Communities." We are on the armed defense of the coming section. Uh, we're gonna read on this, comment on this, and uh, you know, see overall. You know, what what did we learn from from this reading? Okay, it starts. Our insistence on military action, defense, and retaliatory has nothing to do with the romanticism or precipitous idealist fervor. We want to be effective. We want to live. Our history teaches us that the successful liberation requires an armed people, a whole people, actively participating in the struggle for their liberty. George Jackson quoted in Bloody My Eye. We must organize self-defense units to protect our community and its organizations. It is the police and the government who are the main perpetrators of violence against poor people. Often we hear of the police murdering and maiming the people in our community, all in the name of law and order. This police brutality has included the use of deadly force against children as young as 5 years old and elderly people over 75 years old. We must disarm and demilitarize the police and force them to leave our communities. Perhaps this can be done after a rebellion or insurrection drives them out, or perhaps they have to be driven out by a street guerrilla force, like the Black Liberation Army tried to do in America in the 1970s. We have no way of knowing. They just have to go. They are an oppressive, occupying army and are not of our community, cannot understand its problems, and do not identify with the people and their needs. Further, it is the corruption of the cops that protects organized crime and vice in our community. And capitalism with its exploitative economic conditions, which is responsible for all crime. Existing police forces should be placed with the community, the poor community's own self-defense force, made up of members of our community elected or appointed by their neighbors to that position, or from an existing street guerrilla force or political organization, if the people agree. They would be subject to immediate recall and dismissed by the community control board of an area. This is only so that we will have community control of the self-defense force begin to deal with the fratricidal poor-on-poor crime and be able to defend ourselves from racist or police attacks. With the increase of violence today and the possibility of mob action in the future, usually in the name of law and order, this community self-defense force is most important. The only question is, can we do this now? We exist now under conditions of nominal legality and civil rights, but at some stage in the process of building up our forces, it is inevitable that the capitalist power structure will recognize the danger to itself represented by such a free commune, and then will try to forcibly repress us. We must have the self-defense capabilities to resist. This concept of organizing a self-defense force accepts any level of violence that will be necessary to enforce the demands of the people and workers. Yet, these self-defense forces would not be a party vanguard, a police force, or even a standing army in the status or usual thought of sense. They would be a poor people's militia, self-managed by the workers and community itself, or in other words, the people in arms. These militia organizations will allow us to engage in offensive or defensive actions, either in general community defense or as part of an insurrection or underground resistance. But what do we right now in conditions of legality to reclaim our community from violent cops? What do we do right now? Do we sit around and debate the appropriateness of military prepar- preparation? When the enemy is in our community now, committing rape and murder of our people, or do we hit back? How do we even get the idea across to our people and start to train them for paramilitary operations? On a mass scale, we could try immediately to form defense and survival skills study study groups under the guise of gun clubs, martial arts societies, wilderness survival clubs, or whatever we need to call them. But a thorough understanding of marksmanship, ammunition making, demolition, and weapon manufacturing is minimal for everyone. In addition, we should study first aid for traumatic injuries, combat communications, combat weapons, combat tactics for small groups, combat strategy for the region or in interregion, combat intelligence of police and military activities, among other subjects. These subjects are indispensable if we are to live underground or doing a general insurrection. 
we should put emphasis on the purchase, collection, duplication, and spreading of military manuals, gunsmithing textbooks, explosive and improvised demolition manuals, police and government technical manuals, and pirated editions of right-wing manuals on the subject, since they seem to write the best material. And also begin the study of how to build intelligence networks to collect information on the rapidly growing totalitarian racist organizations, along with the intelligence and counterintelligence information on the government, secret police, and law enforcement agencies, like the National Intelligence Agency, Secret Service, and any and every other subject which could be of use to us in the upcoming struggle. So, um, yeah. Yeah. This is definitely one of the things that we are lacking on this side. And the right, the right, they have been on it for years. They have been on it for years, um, planning for, uh, for what? I don't know. Because they did the insurrection thing and it was nothing. Like y'all had, if y'all was going to do something, that was the time to do it. And y'all have all these, this quote unquote training and all these weapons and stuff like that. But y'all, I don't know. Anyways. They have been prepared. They, you go to a gun range, that's all you see. I mean, these folks, they got guns upon guns. We got militia or training camps and shit all in Tennessee. Like, they own it. We, historically, have not been on it for various reasons. For one, government surveillance. You know, any attempts at these types of things were obviously destroyed, dismantled, um, uh, dissembled, um, because what are we fighting for? What are they fighting for? What are they for? What are we for? Obviously. And also, you know, with the liberalization of everything and the liberalization of a lot of these quote unquote leftist policies and things, you know, the whole thing about gun gun violence and gun control and being for peace and all this other stuff kind of watered down, you know, a lot of the quote-unquote more radical uh, tactics and and teachings that were going on about stuff like this because this is, these are no-brainers, no-brainers at all. We have to have protection. Even now, even before anything goes down, y'all going to these protests, y'all going outside with nothing. We don't have any self-defense training. We don't know how to maneuver out of things. We're no, there's nobody teaching uh, certain classes on how to grapple, how to get out of grapples, how to, uh, that, like, there, there's, like, basic stuff that could be beneficial to us right now, today. And even if we're trying to teach, you know, in our communities, trying to reduce gun violence, trying to, uh, you know, just do things like that, those types of teachings could be beneficial to the community as a whole, just intercommunally. How how do you, if somebody is attacking you, how can you get away with them if you don't have a gun? How can you not lethally detain somebody and restrain somebody? Like, these are very important things that will benefit us in every area. Um, and he was also talking about, um, you know, just, just learning about, learning from our enemies. Like, how are they doing it? How, how, how are these spies and stuff in the CIA moving around internationally? How is the FBI able to infiltrate? What type of systems do they have in place what type of infrastructure does the, the the military have with their different branches? You know what I'm saying? And this is stuff that, you know, people that have worked in there, former, former military uh, personnel, could provide for us. You know, if you're going to distance yourself from the military, if you're going to say that is bad, I no longer associate with that. There's a lot of people like that around America. They should use some of that knowledge or all of that knowledge to help us figure out how can we duplicate some of these things or make it better to fit what exactly we have at hand. So, yeah, there's there's a lot to be done. There's a lot of learning to be done. And not even on the violence side. I know this way he's talking about uh, community defense and stuff like that. But even like we've talked about it, 
producing food. We know we don't have the infrastructure to feed a neighborhood. We don't. These community gardens ain't going to do it. But people who have knowledge on stuff like that, farmers willing to give up land, uh, people who, who are just good cooks, people who know how to forage, people who know how to can, like there's a place for everybody and all these things are necessary now with the organization of people. This is the stuff we need to be teaching. This is the stuff that we need to be learning. This is the knowledge we need to be accruing. Now, yes, with the in- invention of the internet, that has helped, can help us a lot so that we don't necessarily have to wait for anybody to give us this knowledge. So that is a benefit that we have in this age, 2023. But having those people that have lived it, experienced it in our groups definitely is a benefit. And those are definitely the types of people that we should be uh, looking for and trying to, you know, talk to and, and get on the right side. Those people that are into, uh, what, are the, what are the doomsday people? What are they the preppers? Great knowledge. Some of them ain't all the way there. Some of them are conservative. Some of them ain't. But people like that, even if they ain't on our side, they do have a lot of knowledge that can be used. Um, so, yeah, 100% to, to that. Um, back to the reading. We should learn to use machine tool technology to produce our own weapons. Perfectly adequate firearms may be produced using a minimum of machine tools, providing the individual or group is willing to do the necessary studying and preparation. It is not enough to know a little bit about these subjects. It's a matter of survival, of life and death, that one be highly proficient. We might not need the immediate raging of urban guerrilla warfare, especially where there is no mass base for such activities. But we need to understand armed self-defense and the knowledge of tactics to resist military aggression against the poor community. It is a foolish and unfortunate trait among anarchists, the middle class left, and sections of the working class movement to condemn the study of military skills as premature or adventuristic. Or on the other hand, to cast oneself into a blind fury of blank of bank expropriations, kidnappings, bombings, or plane hijackings. Too many people in the movement have a death trip approach to guns. They assume that if you are not fooling around, then you should prove your convictions via a suicidal shootout in the streets. It does not have to be that way. But the movement doesn't even have the luxury of such tepid debates. And much have an armed defense policy because we have a long tradition of government, political repression, and vigilante paramilitary violence. Although such attacks have been directed primarily at poor communities. In the past, they have also been directed at labor unions and descendant political groups. Such violence makes it absolutely absolutely necessary to acquire the familiarity with firearms and military tactics. In fact, the poor resistance movement that I spoke of earlier should think of itself as a paramilitary movement rather than a strict political association. We must assert our rights to armed self-defense and revolution, even though it is true that there is a lot of loose talk about guns, self-defense, revolution, urban guerrilla warfare, etc. in the working class and radical movements, but with very little study and practice in handling and using weapons. Some of the same folks think picking up a gun means that you pick one up for the first time on the day of an insurrection or confrontation with police. This is nonsense and is the real revolutionary suicide. You could get killed not knowing what you're doing. But many instances attest to the fact that armed community self-defense can be carried out successfully. Even as important as the act of defense itself is is the fact that these instances of successful self-defense can be made a tremendous impact on the black community encouraging other acts of resistance. Onward to social revolution. Very, very good. Okay. Well, I had already went on my little rant, but, you know, I agree with everything that he said um, in this part specifically. Um, These are the real world things that we should be doing. Like, even for us, you know, if if you don't have an organization that, if you're in the city where there's no leftist organizations, you feel kind of lost, you feel like you don't. There's nothing really to be done. You're talking to people. It's not working. There's still a lot of things that we should be learning. Um, the theory, of course. The theory of why. you got to know the why. But also, there are so many things 
that that have to be learned, that have to be established, just as a, in a in a dual power structure. Just 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 getting people prepared before we can even talk about you know the revolution, because certain things will have to be in place post. I saw somebody on uh, TikTok talking about this. Um, you know, a lot of people are getting, you know, their eyes are getting open because Biden is being Biden. And I guess, you know, for some people, this is the first time they've actually, you know, cared or paid attention. And so a lot of people are like, revolution, revolution. But I don't know, what do we do next? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Because people think of revolution as a one-time thing. People think of revolution as the act of overthrowing physically getting somebody out and sitting there and taking their place. But that is not it. It is it's the whole process leading up and the whole process after. Things like this you have to be organized. And that's something uh Kwame Ture talked about all the time. The difference between mobilization and organization. Mobilization is everybody showing up to a protest. Mobilization is everybody storming the Capitol. Mobilization is everybody coming over here and and going to the White House and tearing stuff up. Organization is a group of people already having stuff in place. Okay. If we know we're doing this, we already got medics set up, we already got food, we already got uh funds to bail people out, we already got um, places to hide people. We already have people that are in control of transportation, moving people here and there. We've already got, you know, lines of communication that don't require uh, cell phone lines. Like, there's all types of stuff that that need to happen to be able to successfully do anything. And organization is the number one thing. And that's what that's what he was talking about. Uh, Lorenzo was talking about, and. Um, Definitely the main point of this thing. How can we organize, or, organize? How can we organize the poor community now so that we'll be prepared for the revolution in the future? And of course, I think there's a lot of things that we can take from this um, that that can be used in 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 2023, of course. But uh, yeah, let me know what y'all thought about uh, this reading. Um, I think it's very permanent today. Cause like I said, on, on TikTok, all I'm seeing is people, young kids, Gen Z, some millennials saying, like, I'm done with the two-party system. What's next? What's next? You got a lot of people that are curious about, you know, what alternatives we have. And while you give alternatives and you talk about what could be, a lot of people want to know what can be done now. And so stuff like this is, is very easy to explain to people and very and very effective in getting people to see, okay, well, maybe we need do need to just join together. Maybe we do need to join an organization. Maybe maybe we need to hang out. Maybe we need to get together and discuss, stuff like that. So this is going off on another topic. Now we're going we're gonna to shift a little bit away from this, but I'm, everything's connected. It's always connected. Okay, so a lot of the talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you have a lot of people waking up. You have a lot of liberals speaking out. What's, what's that girl, Simone? What's that girl who was uh, Joe Biden's campaign manager? The one who tackled that lady, but then got dropped as soon as he became president. Yeah, she was on um, on TV speaking out, you know, saying, you know, there's nuance to everything. And the Palestinians pretty much saying that the Palestinians aren't all bad, yada, yada. So you have a lot of liberals and stuff that are getting onto this and, you know, seeing this as their time to shine and, and say they two cents. And I want us to be very wary because we know we know what's coming next. This is going to be co-opted. It's already been co-opted by the liberals in turn to just either get people to vote or to give money to a campaign or to tell somebody to join a nonprofit or tell somebody to give them money for something. And that's what we don't want to happen. We want to keep people enraged. We want to keep people enraged so that they know for a fact there is no solution in this. I saw some people that was talking about um, joining a labor union, going on a strike, um, civil disobedience. Like, this is what we got steady to get America. Like, they were saying, like, you know, the protests and march don't work. We saw that with Iraq. We have to withhold our labor. We have to withhold our labor. No, boo. No, boo. No. Ew, gosh. 
this isn't a a lifetime movie okay you don't vote for that politician you don't get that politician working that's okay they're just gonna get somebody else the politician isn't the one running stuff. The politician is the one voting a yes or a no. But ultimately, the ones that are running shit are those people, the big corporations, the big donors, the big oligarchs who have their hands on every side of every party that are pretty much calling the shots and using the politicians as, as pawns. And even in stuff like, you know, people are saying boycott. I know we want to feel like we have some type of power in in moments where we feel hopeless. So we're grasping for anything. The the auto strike with Ford and other companies uh, that's supposed to be like great for America. Yada yada yada. Uh, Toyota and and Tesla are saying they're loving this because they're just making more money. We're boycotting, boycotting Starbucks for supporting Israel and giving money to another corporation who's using child slaves in Africa for the cocoa. We're boycotting Apple for Windows. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's, that's we got to get to that point. We got to get to that point where people see, no, 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 even this. You're in a, you're in a maze. We're in a labyrinth of capitalism. You can't go this way. You can't go that way. You're stuck. Unless you look up and get out. You're still trying to maneuver in the maze. Get out of that junk altogether. There's no way. You're not going to boycott yourself to revolution. You're not going to uh, strike yourself into change. It has never happened in American history. Never and the times that they tell you Montgomery boycott, how did that change the economic system of America? Montgomery had the boycott. Let's look up the stats of the black Americans that's living in Montgomery now. Are they living the mid- in the, the middle class American dream lifestyle? Like, come on, guys. We, we have to start thinking critically. We have got to. And I know that some people, for some people, they don't want to lose hope. You know, they may fall into depression, stuff like that. I get it. But you need to face reality. And some people, they're just paid hacks. Their job is to make you think that there's still a way to make it work in America. There's still a way to play by the rules and and somehow get things to change. That's a Disney movie. That is not here. That is not now. We have to continue to agitate we have to continue to to call out the contradictions we have to continue to call out these people who on the surface mean well boycott strike we have to be we have to be the party poopers i'm sorry and you come out with facts you come out with facts you come out with historical uh electrical materialism you come up with uh historical backing you come up with statistics you come up with everything to show them that eventually, at the end of the road, we're going to be back here in 10, 20, 30 years, just like every other time. So, um, yeah. So, it, it's just been, I've had to unplug a lot this past month. Uh, we ain't been that active on Twitter because of that and for good reason, because for my mental health. But um, it's time for us to get back on there to help (laughs) with everybody else fighting for their life to continue to combat some of this this rhetoric that is trying to slowly but surely pull people back into the system and make them think oh if you just vote third party or if you just go to the green party but eventually still continue to reinforce this capitalist system things will be better so what do y'all think let us know hit us up in the comments um Hit us up on social media at Building Our PWR. Hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, Hope y'all have had a good one. Uh, If you have any other recommendations you'd like for us to read, uh, anything else you'd like for us to talk about, let us know. We will try to get to it in time. All right, this has been Gabby, and this has been Building Our Power.